World premiere, the Kia Carenz has arrived in India. It's the revival of Kia's long-running nameplate from Europe. And this car will be made only in India, first for our market, and then will be exported from here as well. Welcome to the Car and Bike Show. I'm Siddharth Pinayak Patankar. The Carenz sets off what Kia is calling a new segment. We, of course, know it's an MPV, and uh, it will come in to that now crowded three-row MPV market. What do you think about it? Well, first, let me tell you what I think about it. Take a look at everything we so far know about the Carenz. It's another world premiere from Kia in India. Yes, the company seems to have this very interesting style of bringing some of these India-specific cars by having a global premiere here in our market. Nothing to complain about, I like it. The Carenz, yes, get used to saying it, Carenz. It is car plus renaissance, that's the name of the car, the way it breaks up. The model is itself, the, the model family, existed in Europe as an MPV, then hasn't been around about three years and is being revived, the nameplate, comes back to life here in India. So what is the Carenz? Well, as you can see, uh, some people are going to call it an SUV, some people are going to wonder what it is. It is an MPV, which means you've got a people mover, but a very stylish looking one, which definitely has SUV design cues. So on the inside, three rows, that's going to be standard. And uh, the car itself, I know many of you want to know when will it arrive? Well, it, the official line from Kia is first quarter of 2022. My guess, a February launch. That's what we are going with. Now, remember, there's a lot of pressure today in terms of production because you know the issue with semiconductors, chipsets. It is a problem. So there's going to be a lot of juggling at Kia's production because there's a lot of waiting still on its other cars. Very popular, the Sonnet, the Seltos, long waiting periods. So to try and balance that with this will be interesting. Okay, the car itself. The face brings you the new Opposites United design language. That is the first time we're seeing a car bringing that to the Indian market. The EV6 was the first car globally to bring that in, remember. So what does that mean? Well, you've got a new signature DRL, which is a star map pattern. It's based on constellations, says the company. Of course, split headlamp down below and this grille with a, a very glossy geometrical diamond shaped pattern. That's going to be something you'll see more and more on a lot of these cars. Star map also on the rear with the tail light trim. The car is a longer wheelbase than a car like the Seltos. Yes, they do share the same platform, that part is obvious. Is it a lot like the Alcazar? Well, we'll wait for the actual dimensions before I can answer that question. But what I will tell you is there is a claim from Kia that this is the longest wheelbase in the three row segment. So that's something to look forward to. Can't go inside just yet. Yes, this car is locked inexplicably, but I can tell you that it's a light palette on the inside. You've got uh, very light beige uh, and black two-tone treatment. The car is loaded with a whole lot of uh, technology. You've got the big touch screen. You've got obviously the inbuilt air purifier and my favorite part, the safety pack, everything from stability control to six airbags, standard across all trims. How many trims? Another question I can't answer for you right now, but what I can tell you is that there will be diesel, there will be petrol, so that's good news. And unlike the Alcazar, we have a promise of a turbo DCT combination. That's again good news. Individual AC vents for the third row and also a few little tricks like a drop down tray in the second row, which has a little niche to put in your iPad, lots of connectivity options. And yes, connected car too, with the whole Uvo Connect suite also coming into this. So lots to look forward to. When do we get to drive it? Probably in the first month of the new year. And we will of course bring you a lot more on it at the time. The part I will not tell you is pricing because the company hasn't told us that either. But what I will ask you is what you think this car should be priced at. Your suggestions will be watched very closely, not just by us, but by Kia India also, no doubt. Tell us what you think of the car overall. Do you like the way it looks and what you really expect from it in terms of its driving and its interior. Kia made a mark here in the Indian market by bringing us world premieres of its first product, the Seltos. We also had the global premiere of the Sonnet. And now it is the Karen's name that is revived right here in India with another world premiere. Mr. TJ Park, who heads Kia's operations, joins us. Thank you. Many congratulations, firstly, and uh, thank you for your time today. The Karen's opens a whole new chapter once again for Kia. You've had huge success with all your launches so far. What about the Karen's becomes different and special for you? 
Because currents, uh, when we at the launching of the shelters and so on, is that we are very carefully looking for the Indian market. And then there is a huge, uh, the fast growing of the RV segment. So we already launching the SUV and uh, the Seltos and uh, uh, Sonnet, but actually there is uh, additional some need with uh, some SUV plus uh, some spacious and the safety issues. That is why we are approaching when we developing the currents. So how we can uh, combine this kind of the unmet need from the market? That is the uh, main our target. How we can developing these cars? Okay. A lot of your pre-launch buzz talked about creating a new segment. Mm -hmm. Tell us how the Karens creates its own segment. Mm -hmm. Because this one is have uh, some uh, more some uh, some some, uh, how, uh, some advantage or a strong point. Because the normally the SUV is just have a uh, bold design and a very powerful and uh, the, some uh, strong top the image. But uh, as MPV is only have uh, some spacious, uh, very economical issues. But how we can combine both this one? When we combine this kind of two the different kind of the, some of the, the need from the customer, when we fulfill this kind of a net a met need from the customer, we can develop a new uh, some uh, segment. That is our the, some uh, strong confidence for this market. Speaking of that confidence, then uh, what's the kind of uh, plan you have with regard to volume? I won't ask you for a specific number, but would you be just as aggressive as you have been with your other products? Because Three-row cars, you know, they have an appeal. There is a certain sale in the market, but nobody has had a massive volume success. Yes, I know. that there is uh, some, uh, some, uh, how can I, some limitations of the three-row vehicles, like uh, some, some of the the, the other OEMs. They are launching the this year the seven seaters, but it was uh, the volume-wise, it is not yeah. so successful. But uh, what we're thinking is when you're adding up the both kind of, as I already mentioned, the, some space and the, some economic issues and the, some emotional, and then the, all those kind of combined, when we can develop in the new segment. It's because the young generations, as you know, they are different the concept, the different the approach to the vehicles. When we put their, uh, the, some uh, new some kind of concept of the, some need, I think that we can develop in the new market, expanding the current market also. One thing I loved in the presentation was, of course, how you've said that safety will be standard, six airbags and all the other features across all trims. So that's great. But uh, you've also talked about doing petrol, diesel, automatic, manual, uh, a lot of different variants. Mm -hmm. And you've talked about the fact that, you know, there is going to be a whole lot inside when it comes to technology, the interface, connectivity, um, and of course it will have UVO Connect and all of that. So given the kind of combinations and variations, how much pressure does this put on your production? Well, it was a very difficult for us because uh, when we're asking the, this, all those kind of different demand from the market and asking to the, our R&D center, they are very some, uh, difficult to developing all the, those kind of features combined together. But anyway, the, our R&D, they are very um, uh, uh, helpful for us and they try their best. I think that this uh, the concept, of what I cannot uh, say the, the it is a perfect 100% perfect car but we did our best to fulfill the, the customer need so that's the new Karens from Kia if you thought that was exciting wait on for segment two because we've got something very racy and very exciting lined up keep watching Welcome back. In case you missed the first segment, this is the all-new Kia Carens. It's the MPV that Kia drives into the market in about a couple of months from now. This color, in case you're wondering, is one of the all-new colors that the Carens brings in. It's called Imperial Blue. Okay, now on to that racy action that I promised. This is an India exclusive. It is another one in a string of exclusives we've been bringing you over the past few weeks. The BMW M3 and M4. And the M4 is the competition model. Take a look. One of the hottest letters in the car world is M. More specifically, BMW M. 
The flagship of the performance division at BMW has always been the M3. Once available in sedan, coupe and convertible form. But since the last two generations, the two doors have been badged M4. And now with the new generation, they get a slightly different styling. The difference really comes from the 3 and 4 series families of vehicles as well. So the M3 is more in line with the 3 series sedan, while the M4, and in this case, the M4 competition model that I have, is more like the 4 series. And yes, both have a monstrous grille that BMW design has received much criticism for. On the M4, the size is similar to the regular 4 series, but on the M3, it's way bigger than the standard 3 series sedan. Honestly, it grows on you, literally. So whether it's the roof line, the fender with all of its huge muscle, or even the exaggerated sporty sort of styling, yes, this car does look sportier than the M3. Now, don't get me wrong, the M3 is plenty sporty as well, but it's just in terms of comparison. Then of course, they pick up styling cues from the 4 and 3 series respectively. So tail light signature, very different as well. And then here you see a lot of blacked out elements. That comes from the fact that the exaggeration on the sporty side increases because this is the competition model. So the competition model adds horsepower, of course, as we have seen over the last few years. BMW gives us not just the M model, but amps it up further to create an M competition model. Mechanically, the M3 and M4 are no doubt very similar and both have the option of buyers choosing that competition variant. Inside, the cars are well appointed with the latest connectivity, interface and safety features you can expect, all more or less standard. And yes, they have enough carbon fiber, leather and metal inserts to keep the sports enthusiast happy. The sports seats with their carbon fiber insert and inlit model name logo are so cool. On the M3 and M4, you get the 3 liter twin power turbo straight six engine, which makes 464 bhp and a juicy 550 Nm of peak torque. The standard transmission is also the delicious six-speed manual. Same engine on the competition models, but with 650 Nm of torque and the power moves up by 30 bhp. The gearbox option here is only the eight-speed M Steptronic automatic. And the competition model also has the option of X-Drive or all-wheel drive, a first for the M3. The M3 and M4 get from 0 to 100 km per hour in 4.2 seconds. On the X-Drive competition variant, that moves to just 3.5 seconds. Fast, right? My M3 test car in this special order Verde Mantis color is a knockout and a perfect foil to the more understated, though equally stunning, skyscraper grey metallic on the M4 X-Drive competition. Both cars are available in three variants, the regular M3 or M4, the competition variant of each, and both have the X-Drive option on top of that. The thing that really blows your mind is how with each generation, the engineers at the BMW M division just make the car even racier, even edgier. How? How is that even possible, right? Well, I don't know how, but it's happened all right. And the good news is that everything you expect the name M3 to stand for, you get by the truckload. Yes, the dynamics are just unbelievably good. No, make that great. The M3 is a beast and will go where you want it to with the poise and manic energy to make you smile year to year. The M3 and M4 have the M Sport Differential, M Driving Dynamics Control, Adaptive M Suspension with electronically controlled dampers, and the M Steering. The precision and the performance, well, that is to be expected. And so, no surprise there. It doesn't stop me from 
getting a nice wide smile on my face. I think I'm going to have that all day. But the thing that's made that grin even wider today, it is something you don't typically get these days with a lot of performance sedans, sports sedans, or even sports cars. And that is this manual gearbox. Yes, I'm so pleased that this is standard here in the United States. It gives you a great sense of control, even though I know fully well that it cannot match the shifts you get from the brilliant 8-speed automatic. So, on to that and on M4 X-Drive competition now. And instantly the car feels even more athletic and more alert. The all-wheel drive system helps give you even better cornering and agility. Interestingly, that X-Drive system also has a two-wheel drive mode. The steering on this car is just such a delight. I, I can do this all week, all month. The car is fabulous on a high-speed freeway, of course, that goes without saying. And you know, the thing I'm really liking about the competition is despite all of the semiconductors and electronics at work to really make the car what it is, you still get this raw mechanical feel from it, which is absolutely terrific. The car epitomizes everything we know and love about BMW's M division. Performance is simply stunning and the body style means that this can very well double up as your daily driver and sports car. Even more practical for family use as a four-door in the case of the M3 family. And that it also sounds terrific, well, that's the cherry on top. Well, when you have a whole orchestra at your disposal with the full pipes section in attendance, You've simply got to play the music. I expect to get only the M4 and not the M3 in India. And given that it is going to be a pricey import, I can tell you it's the all-in M4 Competition X-Drive model for India. And the car is already pegged for its debut here that should happen around February or March 2022. So how do you like the BMW M3 and M4 and how do you like the Kia Karens? Please react to all of this. At Sit Patankar on Twitter is how you can reach me. And uh, remember that there will be even more exciting stuff coming to you next week. So there's something to look forward to on the show. In the meanwhile, promise me you will wear your seat belts or your helmets. And yes, please stay safe as the pandemic once again starts to get things a little bit worrying around the country. Do your bit and keep all of us safe. Take care.